shit. We are going to dive right in and we're going to take a look at this track. And uh, after that, we are going to dissect it and take a look at how I use Metropolis Arc 2. Uh, so here we go. Bam. <laughs> Yeah, well, there we have it. So that's Metropolis Arc 2. So like I said, um, it has an awesome sound. Um, it's uh, like, like I said, I mean, it's, it's a very small library in terms of like what it's meant. It's not meant to do like incredibly large, like two steps from hell type music, but it's definitely awesome for that style, which is like much more sort of reserved. But yet, um, you know, this one in specific, I sort of went for like a mixture between like sort of Elfman and sort of Zimmery, but like um, definitely has that um, that interesting feel with the with the variation and in, in the harmony and everything like that. That. Um, but yeah, so pretty much um, I'm just going to walk through how I use Metropolis Arc 2 in this piece. And then from there, we'll take a look at the library, um, the part of the library that I didn't use. Um, so yeah, I tried to use like a very like sort of wide range, um, you know, in this demo track. I used a lot of the winds. I used the strings and I also used the organ, which is pretty awesome. Um, it's like a flute organ. They have two different types of flute organs, but it definitely has... You know, I can do that. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a very, very nice organ. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it very not very normal that I start out a track like so exposed with the organ just like that. Uh, but then you know it comes in with the really low strings, which sound you know pretty incredible. I mean, it's just like so intense. Um, and then we have like the boom and everything like that. And uh, one thing that you won't be able to tell just by sort of listening to the track as a whole is that there's a lot of woodwind work in this thing. Like um, under this section right here, I'll play that. There's sort of like a, you know, the contra clarinet, uh, contra bass clarinet. Uh, which, uh, you know, it definitely works in the context of other orchestral instruments, I guess, if you orchestrate it right. And this is pretty much orchestrated for, like, the lower brass section, so we have, like, the tubas, and then, of course, we have our, um, we actually have our Wagner tubas, which is pretty much, like, lower French horns, um, then our euphonium and everything like that. But, yeah, so we start out, of course, with our, um, uh, with our sort of, um, ostinato organ line, like, uh... And then we come in with our low strings here. As well as we are we also have a couple soundscapes from a couple soundscapes from Omnisphere, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
And by the way, it's also important to note that this track is called The Machine. So it's supposed to be like a, like a very sort of dark, mysterious track um, that sort of like uh, is in the same universe as what like, you know, like Metropolis, like, you know, sort of like in the in the trailer for, for it, um, the, the prologue, I think, or whatever, like when it goes down under the city or whatever, like and it shows like the inner workings and everything like that. I was definitely going for that type of feel, like a sort of very ambient yet um yet sort of um, eccentric type feel, especially when it gets into this other section, um, which um, if we take a look here, this is also the piano, by the way. But yeah, so it pretty much goes, um, if we go ahead and listen here. From D minor. F sharp major. Right, and then it goes, um, of course, to the F major, A major, then back to our tonic. So we pretty much just went like on a big, like, sort of um, um, journey through all this weird harmonic stuff, and then eventually we came back. We came back to our tonic, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I mean, the piano is, is definitely beautiful. So yeah, and by the way, the only sort of string ostinato part that I used in this piece that isn't from Metropolis Arc 2 um, is the sort of like very, sort of very fast um, string ostinato part that I needed for like um, the very agile part, like this, like for the very sort of high section, very agile, and that was from actually the original Albion library, so in the new uh, Albion library or whatever, the, the, the remake of it, um, this is from the Albion legacy section, um, so it's... Um it's very awesome for Austin Austinados. So yeah. Another part of this library that I also think is fantastic is the the choirs, unbelievable choirs. I believe they have a children's choir, a woman's choir, as well as sort of like a men's bass choir. And all three of those together sound pretty badass. Let me just go ahead and play that. Um, so we'll go ahead and grab <clears throat> the woman's choir, men's choir. I don't know why the children's choir is all the way up there. But yeah, we just play. So yeah, like I said, it's pretty cool. Uh, and I sort of orchestrated the choirs to be able to like weave and move in and out of each other, which sort of adds to that whole sort of um, ambient, creepy vibe that this thing was going for. But that's the thing with this piece. It sort of starts out in that sort of creepy um, machine-like feel, but then it goes into this very sort of mysterious, like James Newton Howard-ish, like uh, um, wondrous type feel. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and... Just play what we talked through so far. So we have our organs, our low strings, then we have our booms, and then here I'll introduce I'll introduce our glissandos. Here's our legato. And then glissando. And I'll show you the effect that I used actually with the panning on this. Check this out. <laughs> so yeah, so pretty much the effect that I did with the panning is I pretty much started this a little earlier than this and then eventually when it sort of caught up to this and this started what I ended up doing is on the panning automation I actually just completely did them opposite to each other so I pretty much started them out on opposite ends of, of the speakers or whatever like opposite ends of the pan and then eventually they go to the other side and then they finish in the center together so that's a very interesting effect that that uh, you guys can easily try <laughs> panning is definitely something cool to mess around with especially in an orchestral setting but also with like cool creepy stuff like this to make everything like weave together well
and it's so funny when you listen to like stuff out of its context like you just listen to this and then you just add in like the contra clarinet it's like <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> It's like, what? And then you listen to it in context, and it's like, okay, that's what we're going for. Um, but yeah, okay, so we have our glissandos there. Um, and so yeah, we pretty much go into this section where we just start sort of doubling this ostinato part. So we start doubling it in the piano, as you guys will hear here. It's like very quick um, staccato. And then we eventually put it into our high strings. And this is, Metro this is Metropolis Arc 2. It has some awesome, awesome strings. Just for And then plus the piano, and then the organ. All right, and then we go into this section where we're pretty much just like, um, we go, here, let me grab it. Okay, so we do D minor, B flat minor. So it's like this very sort of dark type thing. And then we have the choirs. What really adds this like very filmic tone to this specific section is the collaboration between the choir and the brass. Like the brass is very is very full um, because it has the you know the tubas and the horns and the, you know and it's it's very sort of full. And then we add on the choirs, um, which really complement that whole feel. Um, so with just the let's go ahead and play the tubas, euphonium, Wagner horns, and then we'll play the men's choir, women's choir, and children's choir. Let's just play these together and we'll check out how this sounds here. And then, of course, we bring in our glissando. We bring back our glissando here, and that sort of leads into this next section, which we also um, use this sort of piano thing. So as you guys can tell, everything is moving, right? We have our piano and we have like this sort of like a... And then we also, have, you know, like have, you know, our strings moving, our like woodwinds are moving, uh, like everything's sort of moving, which adds that very sort of fluid feel. And I'll go ahead and play this. back to our intro um the choir is from metropolis arc 2 pretty much everything's from metropolis arc 2 here other than just a few different things like including some synth stuff from omnisphere um and then this patch from albion one but just i'll just go ahead and play some of the stuff here that i'm using um so we have this organ like i said this flute organ and then there's like another sort of flute organ and this is like a longer one That's like a different organ. And then we have our piano. And this is the more softer piano. So yeah. And then we have this uh, patch from Albion 1. Which has that, it's like very quick, agile. And then we have all of our spiccatos from Metropolis Arc 2. Um, so yeah, we have our high. Then our mids. On the piano, we do not have any post. This is all... Uh, 
That is all raw. Okay, and then we have, um, we go into our choir. So I'll just go ahead and play a little bit of the women's choir here. So there's our woman's sustains, and then I'll just play a little bit of our children's choir legatos. And then uh, the same exact choir that I played before that one, the woman's choir, but in a legato format. And then we have our men's choir, which can get pretty low. I mean, and this can get like, I mean, this is like tuba like area. I mean, it's so crazy low. I mean, it's like pretty much wild. Here, oh, there we go. Yeah. And then if we go, and I just want to go ahead and check that out. Let's go ahead and hear the staccato and that articulation. Uh. <clears throat> So this is the staccato in that. <laughs> Why does it keep saying bleh? What is it saying? Sounds pretty nice. Um, and then the, let's see, no, the sustains. Uh, yeah, so we have our sustains here. And the sustains are excellently put together. So yeah, and then what else do we have? Um, we have our low strings. And the legato is beautiful. And as as you guys can tell, when that low when the low strings do come in, it's just like so in your face and intense. Uh, so. As you guys can tell, one of the main attributes of this library is that it's very detailed. You can hear the detail. Like, if you listen to the alto flute. Now, 
you guys would actually think this is funny. This is a Christmas card. It's from my uh, one of my old professors that I love. He's awesome, and he always makes fun of my epic. He always makes fun of epic music, like Hans Zimmer type music. So he says, "Here's to a great uh, 2017 with um, of music and epic everything, epic life." Uh, hugs Mike, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he <laughs> made fun of my epic music. Uh, okay. Okay, so yeah, let's go back in here. Let's just go ahead and take a look at Metropolis Arc 2, what's in here. So yeah. Alrighty. Well, here is Metropolis Arc 2. So we are given, of course, double articulations, uh, or multi-articulations, as well as single articulations. And, um, uh, so yeah, and then also these odd, like, I don't know, it's like time mapping or whatever. I don't know. I never use it. Um, never used it in my life. I'm pretty sure it allows you to, like, stretch things out or whatever. Like, it allows you to, like, sort of format the, the time in which things are, I don't know. It's weird. Um, but, yeah, so, okay, so we'll start out in our orchestra section. So we have um, strings high, low, or high, mid, and low. Then we have um, pretty much uh, six harps. Uh, it sounds pretty cool. I'll go ahead and play that for you guys. I thought I heard a clap in the background there. <laughs> That's what I mean by uh, like detail. I love the detail. Like you can hear everything there. There's some of the glissandos. So yeah, um, and then we have our alto flutes, and I'll just go ahead and play a little example of some of the flutter tonguing as like an effect. whistling this is an interesting wind noise to cut wow this is interesting I'm gonna use that I don't even know why anybody use that that's interesting um, okay, so we'll go to our bass flutes. We'll listen to the legato here. The ones that I haven't loaded, it has to just like work on the sample data, whatever. Uh, um, so here's our bass flute legato. Of course, if you hold down the sustain pedal, you'll be able to play chords. We'll play the jet whistle with the bass flutes. Oh, yeah. That is in your face. Damn. like the long swells so let's count it's like 10 seconds swell and the shorter swells are Around half that, so like five seconds, four or five seconds. Um, okay, and then we have bass clarinets. I'll go ahead and play the legato for this. Listen to that register. I mean, it's gigantic what you can do with this thing. I mean, it opens up. 
it, it totally like um, the type of samples that we have nowadays. Honestly, it just completely like lifts um, that weight off of our shoulders. That I guess that composers once had when they couldn't sort of get those instruments that were you know quite rare that weren't sampled yet. Now I mean now so much is sampled when we have like Metrop uh, uh not Metropolis uh, Metropolis Arc Two. Um, you know, with stuff like this, um, contra bass clarinet and stuff, and then we have Spitfire Albion Five with all of these r super interesting articulations. You know, for strings like uh, you know all that type of stuff. It's unbelievable what we have, and then Albion Four with all the Aleoloric stuff. I mean, it's pretty much just unbelievable. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and play. Um, actually, I want to play the staccatos in these guys. Damn, it's pretty sweet. I love the detail. It's pretty awesome. Alrighty then, let's go back here. What do we have? Alright, contra bass clarinets. I wish I actually used these. I used the staccato articulation in this piece, but yeah. Holy lord, just listen to you can hear that the actual legato transition that's in it. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking crazy. What? Don't tell me it could. It's freaking wild, man. <laughs> oh my lord, it's so good. That's pretty insane. All right, those are contrabass clarinets, Wagner tubas, which pretty much like you'd have a descant horn if the if the horn line was too high, you'd have a Wagner tuba if it was too low. It's sort of like a uh, sort of a lower French horn. It's very helpful. Let's see. Wait for this thing. Okay. Now we have our Wagner. All right, let's go ahead and test out. I sort of prefer close to. That's wow, how does like I mean what are they unless they've put it put like a desk in the heart, I didn't even know that the range is that Pretty unbelievable, honestly. 
Alrighty. The fuel horn. Sounds great. I love the fugal horns. Um, bass trumpets. Okay. I could do me some good bass trumpets. All right. So it looks like we have, yeah, like E2 all the way up to, all the way up to C5. Awesome range. You do like a... Great. Awesome. All right, then are you phoniums? Somebody asked, we have a question here. Do you bother with starting a template uh, that preloads tracks? If so, how do you go about um, in integrating Metropolis Arc into it? Sure. Um, so whenever I get a new library, generally, if I like something so much and I know that I'm just going to use it tons, I'm going to put it into my template because it just sort of helps my workflow in general. So I'll probably open up like a new template, uh, well, one of, my, one of my templates, and then I'll just sort of add it in, and then I'll save it as a new template, and I'll probably end up getting ready to getting rid of something since this is would be like replacing something for example um like you know if i for example if i really enjoyed the alto flutes here i might like get rid of an alto flute patch on my template or something like from uh from berlin winds or something like that you know so if i enjoyed something here so much um that i would probably just sort either replace it or you know sort of add it um into my regular template um, so yeah, one thing that Metropolis Arc 2 doesn't have, which I mean Metropolis Arc 1 didn't have as well, which I totally understand is it doesn't have like sort of pads and everything like that. So the, the pads that I was using here uh, were sort of like from um, Omnisphere and stuff like that. So um, definitely it doesn't have any pads and stuff, but it definitely has the all the orchestra elements. It's really, really unbelievable. Um, so yeah, and then I believe the only last thing that we had was the tubas, which I have the tubas here. They have a very warm tone, like I said, so they work very, very well. 
with the Wagner tubas and the euphonium. It's just so meaty. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, uh, let's go back here. Now, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the legato and the strings um, because we could do like a little comparative analysis, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's for the hell of it do like I made one orchestra. We'll do. Stupid legato patches always take forever. It's always from guys. It's always from uh, like cinematic strings too or whatever. But that is no problem. I can wait. Bam. Then we will do. This is our mid. So we'll load up mid here. Sweet, and then we'll, we'll do like uh, oh god, cinematic strings too always takes forever. But anyways, yeah. So the the legato is definitely very very nice in this new one, um, and I do enjoy how they actually split it up into highs, mids, and lows. Of course, that means you can't like orchestrate for violins, violas, cellos, basses. Like you can't orchestrate the sections individually. Um, but um, it definitely having those like the high mids and lows it makes things quicker um and much more uh sensical and in like a sort of composing type environment uh which is excellent um okay this is almost done here okay all right here we go um yeah, the reason why I don't have this thing like batch saved or whatever is because this is in my template, so I don't ever load this up really in a different. Alrighty, let's do a little comparative analysis here. So let's start out with the strings from Albion 1. Here we go. So there is our Albion 1, and then we have our Metropolis Arc 2. And then our cinematic strings. So the best scripted legato is obviously cinematic strings. Cinematic Studio Strings. The most realistic? Definitely uh, Metropolis Arc 2 is beautiful. So yeah, um, and then we will go ahead and, I guess, take a look at our other sections um, in, in Metropolis Arc 2. Alright, let's see. Um, we have, alright, our choirs. So, right, so um, I took you guys through the choirs, but we can just go ahead and load like a sustain patch from each of them. It loads quite quick, I like this. Or what happens if you I want to do it?
somebody says, if you do not have ARC2, you should invest into Metropolis or even Albion product. What? Uh, throw. Seems like you got probably getting Spitfire Winds pack first, though, since the angel price is so much lower. I actually prefer cinematic strings. Yeah, cinematic cinematic strings too is excellent, but yeah. So the choir is all together. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and then just alone, we have our children's choir. This is without any reverb added onto it, so it's pretty, pretty extraordinary. And then finally, our basso profondo. for the hell of it probably my let's go ahead and load you know what uh <clears throat> i want to see how this fits with other libraries so i'm going to go ahead and load in a few other things so let's load in um here we go in bam and then Like we're literally going all out. We're just creating like a massive ensemble right now. This is fantastic. Okay. Oh Lord. Okay.
could even do Thomas Bergerson. Ladies and gentlemen, Heart of Courage. Yeah, we can't really go out with this thing, but yeah. I um, mean, that is. Oh. Well, that one, <laughs> that surely was fun. Oh my god! Oh wait, what happens if you? Oh my god, we are being so freaking crazy. Okay. That's the choir. <laughs> it's like the best. Okay. All right. So now we are on to the big and beautiful percussion section. So we will start out with our percussion ensemble. See, this is why I don't date, because if I dated people, I'd have to pay for their dinner and stuff, and I couldn't end up buying beautiful libraries like this. I mean, it's... Oh, too loud. It looks like it flams. What? 
This is a weird. I have no. What are you supposed to use these for? It sounds like a like a tin water bottle or something. Okay. These sound good. Probably be like big hits. A little bit of. Awesome. Really good. No velocity control on these guys. So it's just what it is. We have flams. Your metal hits because I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this would work in here. I have my wand here. It's my conductor's wand. Also notice my Harry Potter wand, I guess. Uh, okay. Well, damn. Probably didn't spell that right. I don't know. Some storing seems to go great with that ascension. Okay, we'll try it. Uh, if it doesn't work, Sean, there's going to be some serious relationship conflicts here. If this does not work, I'm going to be so pissed off at you forever. <laughs> like forever. Okay. I think it'll work, though. I think you're you're on track. Okay, where is this? Here we go. There's like cellos, maybe? Or violas. Hey, don't you L LOL me, Sean? You should give me no LOL. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this just sounds like the new Harry, uh, the new Star Wars. Wait, what was it? We have 
that. Yeah, I don't have viola. Oh my lord, that's awesome. Oh yes. Oh, I love I love it. I love J. Kino. None of my music friends can tell me not to love this score because it is so good. It's so good. Okay. Anyways, yeah, we we're gonna use soaring strings. Oh god, people are already probably trying to send me death threats on Facebook. Ashton, you are talking hatefully against us for liking Michael Giacchino's score. Okay, no it. It's a little too full for like violas right now. It's a little too full for violas or violins one or two. It's just a little bit full for the high section. But nice try there, Sean. Uh, let me actually. Yeah. It's just too full. It's too full right now. But I do understand what you're saying. Like, uh. Okay, we'll record it. And here we go. Crap. Yeah, it worked. Crap. Nope. There we go. All right, let's listen to that.
Love it. All righty. Cool. All right, so we just took a look at what, – what were we on here? Oh, yeah, now we're on our keys part. Okay, so we'll load up a new – So again, here's our here's our piano. It's a very beautiful piano. Then we have our glamour piano. tremolo it the piano what that sounds more just like this or Yeah, so the romantic button I believe has to do with like the vibrato, like more like romantic is like let's see. <clears throat> what is And then without Actually, it might have to do with the legato transitions. Um yeah, more like the legato transitions. And 
And before we go anywhere, let's go ahead and see what the hell this is. Oh. Okay. Damn, no basses. But yeah, I love the harmonium. <laughs> and then our last thing here um, is just the organ that we were. So we have three different organs, I believe. So we already played the first two. Here's the third one. We have our second one. And then our first one. Oh, I've been playing the harmonium with it the whole time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead. You can definitely do like that. I mean, yeah, this this library this library is most definitely going to be on my list when writing music. I mean, I'm going to be writing with this thing a whole lot now um i mean now what do we what do we have i mean it's 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 gonna fit in with all this stuff i mean it, it is just unbelievable it's it's truly a uh i mean orchestral tools i mean they are an unbelievable company um i have to say you know spitfire are my bros i love my guys at spitfire they're unbelievable and i recently reviewed albion 5 too it's amazing uh, but I love what Orchestral Tools is doing as well, and their uh, their sampling capabilities have just gone have sort of skyrocketed and have become unbelievable. Um, so yeah, well, thank you guys so much for joining me. If we have any last minute questions, I'll wait around just one second. If you guys have any questions about the library or anything about that, the piece, um, or yeah, we can just go ahead and uh, play the piece one more time. And then um, I will say farewell to you guys, and we will be having a sickly awesome live stream event friday it is our christmas stream okay we're going to be writing christmas music on live stream and having a good time but there's going to be no port involved there's going to be none of that stuff okay we're gonna we're gonna stay level-headed okay we're not gonna you know do any of that stuff but it's gonna be a good time uh and we are going to write some christmas music and i Definitely bet we'll use some of these choirs in the, in, uh, in the Christmas music as well. The choirs are excellent, especially the children's choir. I think that'll work great. 
Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and play this piece one more time. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, let me know what you guys want to do. Uh, either comment down below, those of you guys who are on YouTube, or for the guys who are on Twitch, message me, email me, anything like that. Um, and uh, yeah, let's play the piece one more time. Here we go. The Machine. Thank <laughs> you. 